the City of Berkeley. Ms. Prince, would you please call the roll? Councilmember Baker? Here. Councilmember Blanchard? Here. Councilmember Cadeckel? Here. Councilmember Platt Onsen? Here. Councilmember Stedman? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Turbrek? Here. And Mayor O'Dwyer? Here. Is there a motion? Uh, the first order of business is the approval of the agenda. Is there a motion to approve tonight's agenda? Uh, Your Honor, I'd like to make a motion to um, uh, approve the agenda with uh, two minor amendments. Okay. Uh, the first being to add a motion M6812 uh, after item 7, which is M6512. Mm -hmm. So the proposal will be, I don't know if we work that as a 7A, 7B, 7B kind yep. of thing. Okay. Thank you. And the second uh, suggestion is to move the communications portion up uh, one item in the agenda. So as it's currently written, there's a resolution and a closed session where we all get up and leave and then come back. And then if we could do the communications before that, uh, then we could just uh, adjourn after the, um, after the closed session. Thank you. Is there a second or given those changes? Support. Support by Council Member Kedekel. Ms. Prince, would you please call the roll on the agenda? Blanchard? Yes. Kadekel? Yes. Clyde Onsen? Yes. Stedman? Yes. Turbrick? Yes. Baker? Yes. O'Dwyer? Yes. And now uh, please stand for the invocation. We have uh, Reverend Braley with us. Thank you. On this beautiful fall season, I have a reading from Joyce Rupp. With a constant chorus of cicadas, the leaves tumble down from long thin silver poplars they twirl to the ground dancing the autumn death dance beneath the great blue sky the leaves seem glad at the going is there something I don't know sparkling in the October sunshine they fill the air with gentle rustling <coughs> one then another and another on they skim down from above bedding the forest table before me with comforting crunches and crackles. This gigantic death scene of leaves does not smell of <coughs> sorrow and sadness. Rather, the earth is colored with joy and the leaves make music in the wind. Why is this dance of death so lovely? Why do leaves seem so willing to go? Are they whispering to each other? urging one another to be freed? <coughs> Maybe you first and then I'll follow, or you can do it, go ahead, supporting one another gladly in their call to final surrender. <coughs> I have not yet discovered the secret of the serenity of sailing leaves. Every autumn I walk among them with a longing that stretches forward, wanting to face that death dance and the truth of my own mortality. Let us pray. <coughs> Holy One, like cycles of the <coughs> creation, like cycles in our lives, institutions and societies have cycles. Help those who are here tonight, our leaders, to know those cycles to be able to let go of the ways that no longer <coughs> make sense, the ways that <coughs> no longer work in our community of Berkeley, and give them vision to see their way forward, to lead us in to the new life you have for us. We pray all this in your loving presence. Amen. Amen. And now please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Now we come to the uh, citizens' comments section of tonight's meeting when you may present your thoughts on issues that are not included on tonight's agenda. Council members will not engage you in discussion. If your concern needs to be addressed by a member of city staff or a department of the city, please sign your name on the sheet provided at the clerk's table. You may speak on a specific agenda item when it is being considered. When you come to the microphone, please state your name and city of residence. Hi, 
Hi, I'm Celia Morse, the Library Director for the City, and I am just here to make two announcements. Um, first, I'd like to remind everyone that the Friends of the Library's Fall Book Sale is this weekend, Friday from 4 to 7, Saturday from 10 to 5, and Sunday from 12 to 4. And if you're looking for something to read that won't require you to pay an overdue fine later, I urge you to stop <laughs> by and see what they have. They've been collecting books all summer, and they have quite a collection. And also, I want to remind everyone or tell everyone that the Rotary's annual pancake breakfast will be coming up uh, November 3rd, Saturday. It is at the Methodist Church at 12 Mile in Kipling. Um, it's the best bargain in town. Tickets are $6 for adults, $3 for children. You can buy them at the door or you can buy them from me at the library. Um, the uh, proceeds this year are going to fund a project that we're doing in conjunction with the Berkeley School District, an uh, anti-bullying project. We're very excited about this and we hope we'll have a really good turnout. So, hope to see you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, uh, Mr. Mayor and members of council. Uh, just for the record, I'm Ellen Lipton, and I'm the state representative for the 27th district. And I'll be very brief. I uh, would like to just uh, give you a little bit of uh, information and insight about what is happening in Lansing and what we can expect um, for the next uh, probably couple of months. Um, Hopefully all of you by now have received uh, the newsletter that I prepared regarding the ballot proposals. Um, I did that in connection to a lot of uh, concern and also calls that we were getting to our office in terms of the, both the number of the ballot proposals. Uh, it's been causing a lot of anxiety and concern as well as the pros and cons. And so um, I put out that newsletter to try to uh, hopefully answer questions provide the language of each of the measures, there's six of them, and then also give a brief uh, uh, sort of pro and con or both sides of the issue to help people uh, make an informed decision on these, um, on these ballot proposals. So hopefully that's been helpful. And of course, if people need an additional copy or um, what have you, please call the office and I would be happy to to send um, to send more out. Um, the October 17th session in Lansing was canceled. Um, and so we will now officially be preparing for lame duck, uh, which would be the session that is taking place after the election. And the things that we're hearing about uh, lame duck is always kind of a free for all. Um, in Lansing, but what we're hearing is that um, there are a couple of items that will undoubtedly be debated or taken up during lame duck. The first one, and I think that's probably the most relevant for the cities that I represent, is the uh, personal property tax proposal, um, which involved, we've talked about this before, um, the repeal of the personal property tax. Um, and as of uh, this time, uh, a replacement uh, proposal has not been offered. So there are, um, there are arguments on both sides, um, but the, um, the, uh, the coalition that has, um, that has sort of come together on the issue is the coalition called Replace, Don't Erase. And so I would urge you, uh, if you haven't, to to visit um, to visit that um, to visit that website. The other item that we expect will be taken up in lame duck is the Blue Cross um, rewrite, if you will. Um, and just in a nutshell, um, there's discussion to change um, right now Blue Cross is a nonprofit but it's deemed the insurer of last resort and it has certain responsibilities <coughs> under statute and that um, is looking to be changed uh, to allow them to be part of the um, the 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 health care exchange that is uh, most likely going to be implemented 
as the Affordable Care Act gets phased in. Um, and so that um, is providing to be a little bit controversial because the Attorney General um, has made requests for a full accounting of Blue Cross. And um, Blue Cross is, uh, they're arguing that they, they don't need to be fully audited and there doesn't need to be a full <coughs> accounting other than what's <coughs> already been presented. So, um, but that is working its way through the system. Um, so those are just some things on the horizon. Um, there may be others, but if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Or uh, if things come up, please let me know, and I'll try to get whatever information I can out to you. So. Thank you. Are there any questions for our state representative? Thank you. Thank you very Thank you. much for being here. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, wish to speak under citizens' comments? Well, seeing none, then we move on to the next order of business, the consent agenda. Ms. Prince, would you please read tonight's consent agenda? Item number one, approval of the minutes, manner of approving the minutes of the regular city council meeting on October 1st, 2012. Item number two, approval of the warrant, manner of approving warrant number 1259. Item number three, ordinance number 0412. Matter of adopting an ordinance of the Council of the City of Berkeley, Michigan to rezone property described as lots 337 and 338 of the Lockmore Boulevard subdivision from single family residential district R1D to parking district P1, second reading. Item number four, ordinance number 0512, matter of adopting an amendment to the ordinance of the City Council, Council of the City of Berkeley, Michigan, chapter 106 streets, sidewalks, and other public places, article four sidewalks, division two, construction and repair, Subdivision 1, in general, section 106 through 164, repaired by the city of the, city of the Berkeley City Code, second reading. And item number five, presentation. Presentation from Denise Brainerd, Berkeley Day's chairperson. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? Motion to approve tonight's consent agenda. Motion to approve by Mayor Pro Tem Tarbrack. Support. Support by Council Member Pat Onsen. Any additions, corrections, changes? Hearing none, uh, Ms. Prince, would you please call the roll? Kadekel? Yes. Platt Onsen? Yes. Stedman? Yes. Turbrack? Yes. Baker? Yes. Blanchard? Yes. O'Dwyer? Yes. And now we move on to the tonight's regular agenda. Ms. Prince, would you please read item number one on tonight's regular agenda? Recognitions and presentations, matter of any recognition or presentation from the consent agenda. I'm pleased to uh, welcome to the podium Denise Brainerd, Chair of uh, Berkeley Days. Thank you. We have a couple of matters left over from Berkeley Days of La uh, from Berkeley Days of 2012 that I know you have been anxiously awaiting. <laughs> but I will get to those in a moment. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to give you an update um, from Berkeley Days. We had a fantastic year this year. We were able to give grants to 24 um, of our community service organizations in the city of Berkeley. Mm -hmm. Starting with the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society that they put on the race this year and it was probably the best year that we've had for the race in recent history. Um, and they made a lot of money for their organization. I would say, and, and I'm, between the money from the, um, the Midway and then the money that the individual organizations were able to raise, this was probably the best year that Berkeley Days has had. So we were able to give a significant amount of money, um, just some of the things that it went to. The historical uh, society was able to purchase a new display case, which I believe they've already gotten and started filling it with items already. Um, and then the Horseshoe Club, the Berkeley Women, Junior Women's Club, Youth Assistance is going to be able to use some of that money to send kids to camp. They um, had a great year with the Taste of Berkeley. So all of the events that we had this year uh, enabled us to really make a difference in the community. I'm very proud that we were able to help as many different organizations as we did. Um, along those lines with distributing the money, we do have a check that we would like to present to um, Bob North with public safety. And this is a check um, because the police do so much for us during Berkeley days from just 
keeping everything under control and keeping things safe, we did want to give back to the police. And we have, um, pre we're presenting a check that we have specifically asked go towards the honor guard. Berkeley does not have an honor guard and um, it is such an important part of representing the police department. Among various departments, there's been a couple of very tragic events in the law enforcement community recently. Um, and the honor guard can go to those and represent Berkeley um, and represent our city in paying respects to those fallen officers, as well as numerous ceremonial functions within the city. So we're proud to be able to give some money towards that end. Um, and hopefully that will enable the police, the public safety department to be that much closer to attaining an honor guard. So thank you. Very much. Thank you. Now, I think this might be what you're waiting for. That's exactly what we're waiting for. <laughs> we had, um, every year we have our, our competition, our friendly little competition. And we have the softball game between the moms, mom and dad's club and city council. And that game is usually pretty heated, pretty competitive. There is another plaque which details the history of it, which is going to be on display in the, in the museum um, because we've run out of space on our trophy. But before I get to that one, <laughs> is so bad. we also have the horseshoe competition that is, that is also gets pretty heated between the Berkeley Days Association and city council. So I'll present that one first, if, if it's okay with you, Mayor. It's very fine. Um, <laughs> which right. does show that for 2012, the Berkeley Days Association did win that match. It's a much smaller trophy. Cool. Yes. Mm -hmm. no. So, <laughs> not, uh, okay. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> so I will, uh, I'll, I'll bring that one up in just a moment. But nice. this is the one, the bigger one, mm -hmm. for the softball tournament which does show that for the 2012 softball game, the city did win. 22 points, to, or 22 runs to 20. Oh. So. One, one quick second. Um, Mike Dooley, yeah. representing the Dance Club, was supposed to be here today. Uh, he is under the weather, not able to make it, but he did give me a prepared statement to okay. read on his behalf. <laughs> 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 Again, this is from Mike Dooley, Berkeley Dance Club. <laughs> I feel like I did right after the softball game, badly beaten up. I sincerely congratulate city council and city staff on their very decisive victory. I have serious concerns that the Dad's Club will never again see that prestigious trophy. The Dad's Club is truly humbled by the beating you put on us, and we are in awe of your athletic prowess. <laughs> <laughs> again, that's from Mike Dooley. <laughs> very nice. Well, that. <laughs> Thank you for representing the Dad's Club with that. No problem. <laughs> so, Mayor, shall I present these to you? Thank you, Denise. And there you are. Yeah, yeah. So. Thank you. And other than that, I would like just like to say our, we are gearing up for Berkeley Days 2013 and our first meeting where we are going to be um, selecting our new board is going to be this Wednesday at 7 o'clock at the community center. We are always looking for new organizations who have ideas. We've brought in um, the Taste of Berkeley as a new event, Miss Berkeley Days as a new event. This year, the Berkeley, or last year, Berkeley Steelers started their pump, pass, and kick which was a new event, so we're always looking for new ideas. Um, the high school instrumental boosters, they are looking at um, creating some new events as well. So it's a wonderful opportunity for people to get involved. We do have applications for membership. They will be available on Wednesday night um, at our meeting, and we look forward to any community service group that wants to get involved being there, or any person who may not be part of a gr uh, community service group but wants to be able to help a lot of groups um, at one time. We welcome everybody. So thank you very much. Thank you, Denise. Thank you, Denise. And thank you to uh, everyone who participated in Berkeley Days. 
It's a beautiful community event that blends great fun and enjoyment and as you can see handing over the trophy it kind of symbolizes a lot of that fun and enjoyment but it has a serious side also. It provides funds for a lot of groups that do great work in our community and for that we are grateful for all you do. Thank you Denise and thank you to the committee. And now Ms. Prince would you please read item number two on tonight's agenda. Presentation matter of receiving a verbal report from Mike P Paleshko representing DTE regarding power outages in the city. Well, very good. Mr. Sessa. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, City Council. You know, I have received numerous calls from our residents regarding the power outages. And I'm pleased to say that every time I have a, a question or need to reach somebody, DTE has always been there to help me address those questions. Mr. Pachelsko, for one, has always been there to, um, to answer any questions. To I know I've, I've called him on, on a Saturday evening, even so, whenever there's any, any issue. And he's been very gracious and is always there to answer any question as soon as possible. So with that, I asked him a few, I'd, I'd say a couple weeks ago, maybe months now, to present to the city council a, a more formal report explaining what is happening with regards to, uh, to the shortages that are happening throughout our region. And I wanted to make sure that our residents as well were familiar with that. And of course, Mr. Pachelska was, was more than willing to come and, and address the city council. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to Mr. Pachelska. Well, he, well, he will give us a report. Well, thank, thank you, you, City Manager DeSessa, for that introduction. And uh, good evening, Mayor O'Dwyer <coughs> and members of the council and uh, uh, members of the staff. I'm joined this evening by Mr. Ron Gherkin. Uh, Ron is our supervising engineer in what we call the distribution planning area. Uh, he's responsible for uh, the engineering of what we call the poles, wires, pad mounted transformers, et cetera, in the area that includes the city of Berkeley. Um, as the city manager mentioned uh, recently, uh, she and I met and uh, one of uh, Ryan Gherkin's direct reports joined me and we presented some information about what we call a health check. Um, we sort of set the template for this back in January of this year when a group of us from DTE met with City Manager DeSessa and her counterparts from uh, a number of other communities here in Southeast Oakland County and uh, basically gave an update on uh, uh, what we're uh, doing to improve the reliability of our system in the area as well as an explanation of some recent power outages. So uh, since uh, January of this year, Ron and I have appeared before a couple other city councils to give a similar type report, and we're here tonight to uh, present this information to you. Uh, what we're going to do, as soon as the presentation is, uh, is ready, I'm going to have Mr. Gherkin come to the podium and take you through the bulk of the presentation, after which time both uh, Ron and I will be available to answer any questions you may have about both the presentation or any other DTE subject. I do want to say one thing here as he continues to get ready, and that is back on July 17th, we had a fire at our Webster substation over in Royal Oak. And some of the circuits that come out of uh, Webster, and you'll learn more about those this evening, feed the community of Berkeley here. Uh, I do want to compliment uh, City Manager DeSessa, Darshell from her office, as well as Public Safety Director North, who were very helpful to us at DTE. A lot of things were happening very quickly. We were going through a number of steps to restore power as quickly as we could to uh, residents that were impacted by this outage. And the three individuals I mentioned uh, were very helpful to us in uh, making arrangements to, to get power back. So with that as an introduction, I do have hard copies of the presentation, and I'm gonna have Mr. Gherkin come to the podium now, and I'll slip around over here, and if I can hand these over. Thank you, Mayor. I appreciate the opportunity to explain what happened and to give you an idea of what the electrical system health check for Berkeley is, what the capabilities are, and hopefully uh, to keep the reliability of your circuits uh, good. Uh, an, uh, the, idea, the agenda is to go through an introduction, a DTE system overview, Berkeley overview, Webster substation outage, and additional information regarding the uh, Berkeley electrical capacity. As for the Detroit Edison overview, we're a, a, a public service company. We have 7,600 square miles, number of customers a little over 2 million. Uh, substation 671, 
number of transformers, 1,600, number of distribution circuits, 2,800. And I'll compare these with the, what Berkeley has also in, in the continuation. Uh, the number of wood poles is a, a million, and a number of URD, which is the underground residential transformers, which uh, are approximately 129,000. The Berkeley statistics, uh, you've got we have approximately 7,200 uh, customers uh, from Detroit Edison meters. A number of residences was approximately 15,000 in 2010. Uh, general purpose subs uh, are four, and the number of distribution circuits feeding Berkeley, uh, 10, with a peak load of approximately 25 MVA, which is uh, a equivalent to 25 million volt amperes. And 100 watt, as a, for a uh, reference, a 100 watt light bulb equals 100 volt amperes. So at a peak time period, that would be the same as running 250,000 100 watt bulbs. Berkeley is uh, shown here, the city boundaries. It is served by Webster substation to the north uh, east. Berkeley Sub is actually on this corner, approximately Coolidge and 12 Mile, approximately, let's say, no. Greenfield. Greenfield. Greenfield 11. Greenfield 11. Okay, I guess I don't know where Coolidge is exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's Greenfield, and I think it goes from 11 to um, 12 and a half. Mm -hmm. 12 and a half. Now, the, the, the intent of this is to go through what caused the major problems back in July 17th. But to go through, originally, Webster substation is the substations were constructed in 1952. Uh, it seems like that is an older substation, but with most equipment, what we do is we update it as time, per, as, as uh, maintenance is required. And we also improve or add distribution circuits, change the uh, relaying and other uh, improvements as they become available uh, in all of our substation areas due to preventive maintenance. Webster Substation was <coughs> at uh, the summer was operating normally, and all the power, all three power transformers and 11 distribution circuits were in service. One of the, the problem was that Webster 1809 was a 4,800 volt circuit breaker, was called to operate on 717 to clear a fault on the circuit. Uh, the breaker did not perform its intended function, and that failure uh, of the circuit breaker to interrupt the fault directly to, led to the fire at the substation. The entire Webster substation had to be de-energized de in order to allow the fire department to put out the fire. And during that time period, I have a couple of pictures at the end which would show why the substation had to be shut down. And due to the pollution and everything, the ash and the soot, we had to have the substation shut down for a period of time while they uh, cleaned uh, all the equipment inside the substation. Um, there's nothing really burning in the substation except for the cables and the fact that the fault was still energized, so the fault was feeding the fire, which was burning the equipment and some of the uh, metal in this position. Circuit jumpers, uh, jumpering plans were established and load where possible was transferred to adjacent substations and those areas where we did, couldn't get the jumpering we had to put in uh, the portable substation and three generators located at various areas. And I believe one of them was near here. All 18 of the breakers were inspected. And what we did in doing, all 18 of the Webster breakers were inspected. And then the, the nine of the 18 were approved for service. Four had some maintenance performed and were approved. And others are being 
three of the 16 are being scheduled for replacement and two are being left out of service temporarily because they were the ones that were adjacent to where the fire occurred and actually that those positions have to be completely rebuilt and that's a time period or that's a time construction that takes uh, a lengthy time. Work is still in progress to restore Webster. Uh, the um, in this, um, hmm, portable substation is still at Webster, but however, the uh, generators, the diesel generators, have all been removed and the circuits have been restored to working order. Due to the, and then there was another outage at Webster which affected um, a couple, maybe two circuits in uh, Berkeley. I should state before that three of the 13 circuits at uh, Webster feed directly into Berkeley and those were the areas that had most of the outages and they were approximately on the northeast corner of the city, Woodward and 12 and a half mile area. The, the restoration uh, procedure was that there was outage occurred on bus 11, so you had 2,988 uh, customers out. And what they do is sub Webster substation is a three transformer substation. Each bus then is uh, sort of the feed from the transformer to a number of circuit breakers. Those circuit breakers then feed portions of city of Berkeley and Royal Oak. Um, outlined in the different colors of the circuits out of uh, Webster. And uh, what happened according to the outage is when they had the 2,988 customers out, all the transformers had to be de-energized in order to be able to put the fire out. And what they did with that is that our stations or the feeds to the substation transformers, we remotely opened up those breakers which then de-energized all three transformers. And at that time, there was 9,500 customers out. Uh, 718, the next day, they re-jumpered areas from uh, outside of the normal Webster area that was adjacent to other or to other uh, circuits. And I believe this is on the next slide. Um, so the areas in black were restored the next day, and they could jump over to the um, Whittier substation and there's another Mandalay substation and also I believe uh, Lincoln and these are substations that are around um, Webster and therefore we can transfer some of the load and not overload that equipment. The areas in red then had to wait until the next day in which they started to put in the portable substation and also three generator locations. And those locations were shown where the stars are. Uh, one was located near the Civic Center here, and a couple over in uh, Royal Oak area. This is, uh, from the last, from a reliability standpoint, this is approximately how many outages per year per circuit that each of the circuits feeding Berkeley have uh, experienced. And the Webster substation, uh, two circuits, 1965 and 373, those outages were all directly related, well, all three of them were directly related to the uh, July 17 outage. However, the, the number of times, one of them, I, I think it was just they had to be uh, restored and then jumpered or opened and restored again. A couple of those times may have been due to the fact that we didn't have enough capacity and had to shut down the circuit intermittently while um, we could restore others. So there was a time period when each of these had to be interrupted. So the, air, the work that they're doing presently at Webster will eliminate the need to have these interruptions next year. The, um, so from a reliability standpoint, all of the circuits are very good in my opinion. I know one outage isn't uh, 
uh, isn't good for any of our customers. However, just from a standpoint that not all the portions of the circuits were out each time, but the majority of them had one, and those ones can usually result from a number of things. One of them could be trees, which is our most obvious uh, condition where we have wind or storm or lightning or ice and the tree comes down into a portion of the circuit and you have an outage. Other things that cause outages would be drivers or poles are hit by cars. Animals are consistently getting into some of our transformers and causing outages. And then there's always the other, the unknowns. But uh, Fortunately, in this area, the reliability has been good from our statistical averages. And then just to go through uh, the maintenance, Berkeley maintenance program, I'm really talking primarily about the substations feeding Berkeley. Uh, Berkeley has, um, I think, about 13, they have about 11 circuits, and five of them serve into the city of Berkeley. Uh, the tree trim schedule, we usually do that on a five to six year period. Uh, so in 2009, it was trimmed about three years ago and then it's due in 2014. And as you can see, the pull tap maintenance seems to be a lengthy time. However, normally it is twice the cycle of tree trimming. So it's getting a little beyond its average but again the way that they figure that out is determining if there are an area of uh, substations that are performing poorly and Berkeley as you saw before the outages are still very good and therefore they monitor and measure the next time they have to do uh, pull top maintenance based on the current statistics and as long as uh, the trees are out of the way or the trees are relatively trimmed, that uh, influences primarily the number of outages that each area receives. <coughs> Berkeley, the available capacity for <coughs> new growth. What this shows is primarily the number of circuits out of each substation, the line clearance, the pull top maintenance, and the substation loadability. These are the, this is what the capacity of each of the substations. No, that the load is third from the last, and then the normal capability, which is its capacity, is uh, the second to the last. And then the percent loading is on the final uh, column. So from a standpoint of none of the substations are overloaded or above firm rating, and therefore what that means is that if there is an outage on one one transformer, under normal conditions, all of our substations have the ability of losing one transformer and automatically be thrown over to another. So at times you're going to see outages that may be a minute, two minutes, up to five minutes. But what that allows us to do is if there's a fault on the circuit, the breakers open and then reclose automatically, but it's a sequence in which uh, load is restored without having um, to manually be involved with it. So a lot of the uh, substation operations are done automatically. And that's questions, but I do have one more column. I just thought it'd be interesting to see what the substation looks like inside during the fire. Uh, the column on the left indicates the main aisleway of the substation. We've got metal clad switch gear, and what that means is that each of these compartments circuit uh, breaker inside and on the other column along and it feeds the breaker would be in this column and then this, there's uh, conduits across over to the relaying and controls and the meters that indicate how much load you have on the circuits. For each of these there's approximately 15 in Webster and the fire, which originated in one position here, and that's the picture on the right, shows the circuit breaker. And then when that fault didn't clear, all it does is keep burning and melting the uh, equipment. And that's what caused all the uh, soot and everything that you see on the floor where people were walking. But that's, that all has to be cleaned up before they could re-energize the substation. 
So I thought this was an example, and in that position where it is, they had to take two positions out of service temporarily just because it burned up all the equipment and there's uh, no way you could reestablish that. But the other ones, effectively, you had a good, there was a large fire there, but all this equipment is still undamaged and it just needed to be cleaned up. And that's the process that took them uh, couple of weeks in order to get it all cleaned up and back to normal but the areas here on the position that's uh, damaged we had to redo the cables and then they have to purchase new breakers and they are going to rebuild that but what we did temporarily was to transfer some of the load over to adjacent circuits that had the capacity so if I go back a uh, one if there's any questions or if you have any additional information are there any questions? Councilmember Blanchard. Just one quick one, Your Honor. Thank you. We have determined what the initial fault was that caused this whole thing? It was in the position. But what, what, what triggered that? A cable, generally it's a cable fails because there's, there are paper and lead cables or uh, polyethylene. And what happens is over a period of time, this, this occurred uh, on July 17th. That just happened to be the peak day, and it was 100 and some degrees during that day after two days of very hot temperatures. That, those conditions stress the system, and therefore I think what happened is that cable decided that it, it may have been overloaded. I don't believe so. I think it was just a, a portion of the joint or so became defective. Yeah. And that heat then caused the two conductors, there's three conductors, those conductors then came together and folded. And then when that then geez, the breaker, the didn't, breaker open. didn't open, it kept the fault burning, mm -hmm. and that's what was burning in the substation. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Councilmember Kideckel. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, gentlemen, for coming out. Um, I received a call as recently as 5 o'clock today. Um, in my neighborhood, there have been numerous outages since April, um, over a half a dozen. And we're trying to, the neighbor's trying to recoup from losing, you know, perishables and, and refrigerator <coughs> freezer. They went online and they filled out the form. Uh, they received another form saying, you know, that it's, you know, they're working on it. I just wondered if for our sake and for the resident's sake, if you can go through the process mm -hmm how to go about recovering any damages. Yeah, I would like um, yeah. Mike if he has yeah. some of that let, let me break this up into pieces and let me first talk about the incident that occurred on July 17th, the Webster substation fire. What we did um, following that incident was had a lot of internal conversation on uh, doing something that was outside the realm of our normal um, procedures. And so we came up with a, a program where all of the customers served from the Webster substation were to receive a credit. And we uh, proactively started contacting the customers. And depending on how long your outage was, uh, the, the uh, incident occurred on the evening of July 17th, and the last customers were restored about 10 o'clock p.m. on the evening of July 19th. So depending on how long customers were without power determined how much of a credit. The credits ranged from $25 to $250. So steps are, uh, were taken then to uh, start processing those. And the best of my knowledge, that work is still going on. So if there are any uh, residents in the community who were impacted by that outage and have not yet received their credit, uh, it will be coming. That, that process is still ongoing. When you go to uh, the, the regular process um, with regards to uh, uh, filing claims, so on and so forth, uh, people do have an option to uh, contact us and, and request a claim form and, and look to file a claim. But we suggest you start with your insurance company and see what kind of uh, re reimbursement or coverage you can have uh, for that. And then if you still would like to uh, 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 file a claim with us, you can, you can contact us either through the 1-800 number, 1-800-477-4747, or via our, our website and follow that process. If you're looking at an area that, it, that has had uh, a number of outages, um, there is what we call an MPSC credit. I don't have the specific details with regards to that uh, here with me tonight. I know that there's one part of that that says that if you've had about eight outages in a given calendar year, then you'll get a credit in the amount of $25. 
or during what we call a catastrophic storm when we have in excess of 110,000 customers out. If you're not restored within a certain time frame, you'll also receive a credit for that. But I, I, I'm sorry I didn't have that information with me tonight. So that's basically the different uh, programs we have when it comes to energy credits or um, the claims policy. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. If I might follow up on your, on your question, what would cause a half a dozen outages in a short period of time? And there was no catastrophic weather in the period of the last six months. Okay, I'll have to have Mr. Gherkin uh, return it to the wasn't podium. related to the Webster fire where they had to shut things down and open them up it, again. It wasn't. I would say that it could be an individual or it could be a very localized event. And if those, I would like to have your address or whatever so that I can check uh, your address and then also anyone else that's a, involved with that if they have conditions or concerns about their electric <coughs> outages. If I can have your name and address, then and we will Please come a little closer to the microphone. If, uh, if we have any um, residences or f council members that have had problems, uh, I would like their name and address and I will get back with them indicating if t what the solution is or what uh, it's occurred. I think that's information that uh, is, is good for anyone and they want to know what's going on and I will get back with them if they give me your telephone and uh, address and name. Very good. Thank you. Any other questions? <coughs> Council Member Baker. Uh, thank you, Your Honor, and uh, thank you again both uh, for your um, material and information uh, this evening and for all that you do to help uh, keep things running as smoothly as possible. Um, question on the, uh, the specific incident uh, and then a general question about collaboration and cooperation with the city. So as far as the incident itself goes, uh, were there any injuries to, to customers or employees in the course of, you know, of taking care of the situation? Any injuries or health uh, issues? No injuries and, and no uh, customers or residents that live nearby Webster were impacted either. Excellent. I'm always glad to hear uh, it's uh, bad enough when something bad happens to equipment, but uh, very uh, grateful to hear that uh, it was handled professionally and swiftly with, uh, with no injuries. Um, to the notion of the collaboration and cooperation, you mentioned at the, uh, the beginning of the, of the presentation about some of the work and the support that you do with the city manager and the deputy chief and, and, and others. And I was wondering if you might um, highlight again some of those kinds of uh, communication opportunities that we have both uh, at the city level and the things that the company provides. Sure. Um, again, back uh, during the incident of the 17th, uh, we uh, we needed to move quickly on installing a portable generator as one of our steps to restore power as quickly as we could to customers. And so again, uh, the, uh, 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 Mr. North was very helpful in that regard and working with us, helping us facilitate that. And we had also communicated with uh, City Manager DeSessa through that process too. So as one part of that, um, uh, my role is to be a liaison with local and elected administrative and elected officials here in Oakland County and so that's one of my my roles uh, we also have um, uh, our media relations people are also uh, communicating to we have the online services the, through the website customers can access information either uh, going to our website and uh, finding out information about power outages or just information in general were those the kind of things you were referring to, Mr. Baker, or something else? That, oh, that's that's fine. Actually, thank you very much for that. And and also, <coughs> I, I'm aware of um, a mobile app is, that's yeah. available as well yeah. for to look at outages and um, yes. and report incidents and track progress. Something we just also. started up with uh, last year. Uh, yes, yes, indeed. So so thank yeah. you for that as well. Okay, you're welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Any additional, Mr. Sessa? <coughs> Just a comment, Your Honor. I'd I'd like to express my appreciation to Mr. Pachalsko because during that time, when he was uh, placing in that. Uh, that uh, <coughs> intermediate generator, uh, I was able to notify the businesses that were surrounding. I, I literally, I went myself to many of the businesses and, and simply gave them an update as to what was happening. And uh, whenever possible, we would do some type of uh, 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 email blast to let our residents know, you know, what's going on. We, again, it only worked if they were, um, if they subscribed to our website, unfortunately. Okay. But, but we did let people know and we kept everybody as, as best informed as we possibly could, but I think DTE kept, kept me informed. Uh, they were there on the time they said they were going to be there, and they did their best to make sure that, uh, you know, our services and our work was not affected. So I, I appreciate that. So thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Very good. Well, thank you both for being here. We appreciate uh, the explanation and the information. You're thank very you, welcome. Mike.
Thank you. Okay, Mr. Sessa, or uh, Ms. Prince, yes. we're going to go to first. <laughs> Uh, please read item number three. Resolution <coughs> number R 4312, matter of approving a resolution designating Saturday, December 1st, 2012 for the annual holiday parade and tree lighting ceremony in Berkeley. Is there a motion to approve resolution uh, 4312? Moved to approve R 4312. Moved by Council Member Cadeckel. Support. Support by Council Member Blanchard. Now, Mr. Sessa. <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. You know, I think uh, the co-chair, uh, Mr. Paul Swayze, says it best when in his letter that he sends to the city council where he says uh, it's best or it's time again to dust off the sleigh and untangle the lights and uh, get ready to plan the 2012 holiday lights parade so i know i thought that was awesome <laughs> <coughs> now I, there are a lot of details here but i also know that the co-chair uh cindy kuhn is here this with us this evening perhaps she may wish to go over uh with the de uh, go over the details with the city council otherwise i'd be more than happy to cinda Thank you very much. First, we would like to invite all of you <laughs> to the annual tree lighting ceremony and our holiday parade. Um, we have been busy working away. Um, it's like year round now. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we are uh, actually um, getting things underway. We're, we've got some marching bands already. And um, as the mayor knows that we've, we've secured several different things. We are um, also going to uh, have the trolley again all day long uh, so that uh, residents can ride around the city. We would really, really, really want to promote um, our businesses, that our business district, both Coolidge, the Coolidge Collection, and on 12 Mile, that they get involved, that they stay open, that they offer little goodies or cookies or whatever you want to bring those people into your businesses and your shops. And um, because we will have the trolley, <coughs> we also will have um, the carriage rides after the parade. Um, I'm not exactly sure if... Uh, Berkeley Community Church is doing the carriages during the day. I'm not sure. I have to check on that. Um, I think that's about it. Like I said, we invite all of you to come and join us. Very good. Are there any questions uh, for uh, Cinda? Other than to say thank you very much mm -hmm. to yourself and Paul <coughs> for all the work you both put into the, and the thank entire you. committee. Thank you. Thank you. And we're always looking, just like Denise, like Denise Brainerd said, we're always looking for more volunteers. Um, this, this group just couldn't continue on if we didn't have volunteers. And um, so we're always looking for more. So if somebody looking. wanted to volunteer, how would they go about it? They can contact City Hall here, and they'll give you my cell phone number or Paul Swayze's cell phone number and they can get a hold of us and um, we're we're now running our meetings every two weeks uh, until the parade and we meet uh, tomorrow night as a matter of fact we'll be upstairs at uh, of the public safety at 7 p.m. our meetings are short we run them about one hour and we get a lot of stuff done in one hour and uh, uh, then we're gonna start working on that sleigh again and everything else very good thank you Cinda right, for being thank here thank you <coughs> Ms. Prince would you please call the roll on R4312 Platt Onsen yes <coughs> Edmund Stedman oh yes Turbrick yes Baker yes Slanter yes Cadeckel yes Odewey yes Ms. Prince would you please read item number four <coughs> public hearing matter of conducting a public <coughs> hearing regarding the community development black grant program 2013-2014 fiscal year Thank you. Uh, I will open the uh, public hearing portion and ask Mr. Sessa to uh, introduce the topic. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. As you know, we're asking for input at this time from uh, residents or individuals that have, would like, have some questions regarding the, uh, the CDBG program for the City of Berkeley. And at this time, uh, individuals can come in and, uh, and make their comment. But just briefly, I'd like to go over exactly what uh, what we are proposing to utilize our funds for this year. We're looking at approximately $38,629 for the fiscal year 13-14. We are recommending for the City Council to consider the following amounts. $27,529 uh, to remove architectural barriers, or sidewalk bumps as, as we call them. 
also 8,600 for uh, public services for uh, disabled services. And in this case, we're looking to purchase uh, the large print books. And we're hoping that uh, with these funds, we can purchase up to 300 large print books. And then also, also uh, under public services, excuse me, we set aside $2,500 uh, for uh, battered and abused spouses. This is for the uh, for Haven. And uh, my understanding is that with regards to public services, the use of CDBG funds, we can't extend no more than 30% of our entire allocation. Uh, and uh, again, it's not, a, it's not a lot of money, Your Honor. We wish that we were. We were receiving a little bit more dollars, but at this, uh, given the limitations uh, at this time, this is what we are recommending. And Very good. Thank you, Your Honor. Public comment. Can everyone put <coughs> their heart, their hands on their heart, please. If every heart, every heavy heartbeat that you have, someone across the country or even here in the city of Berkeley is experiencing domestic violence or sexual assault. Okay. Um, I want to say hello and good evening. To everyone here, my name is Constance Brown and I am from Haven. And our address is 30400 Telegraph Road, Suite 101, Bingham Farms. <coughs> and the zip code is 48025. But first I want to thank you all for the city of Berkeley for all of your help and support that you have given us in the past. Okay? So again, I want you to place your hand on your heart as a reminder that someone, someone is experiencing domestic violence and sexual assault. Um, and as you know, Haven is an agency which helps with issues of domestic violence and sexual assault. And again, place your hand on your heart as a reminder that someone ex is experiencing domestic violence and sexual assault. So every year, Haven provides counseling shelter for survivors of abuse, whether if it's men, women, or children. And we have offices in Pontiac, Bingham Farms, Farmington Hills, Rural Oak, and also Southfield. Don't forget the reminder that someone is experiencing domestic violence and sexual assault. So last year, we worked with approximately 25 of your individuals here in the city of Berkeley in your community, in addition to approximately 15 crisis calls from your residents. And again, someone is experiencing domestic violence and sexual assault. So tonight I am asking the city of Berkeley for $2,500 to continue to support Haven in our effort to provide services for survivors in your community. And again, someone is experiencing domestic violence or sexual assault. Again, I want to thank you for all of your help and all of your support in the past and also considering our current request. If you have any questions at this time, I will be more than happy to answer them. And don't forget, someone is experiencing domestic violence and sexual assault. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Brown. Thank you. Any questions for Ms. Brown? No, thank you for being here. Thank you. <clears throat> Uh, anybody else to comment on this public hearing? Seeing none, then we will close the public hearing. Ms. Prince, would you please read item number five? Resolution R4012, matter of adopting the Community Development Black Grant Program application for the 2013-2014 fiscal year. Is there a motion to approve R4012? Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Councilmember Stedman. Support. Support by Councilmember Kadekel. Mr. Sessa. And council, again, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we are recommending certain dollars uh, to be allocated <coughs> for CDBG. Just to go over again very briefly, we're looking for $27,529 to uh, remove architectural barriers, in this case, uh, sidewalk ramps. Uh, according to the memorandum here, it looks like uh, we may be able to uh, replace nine to 10 uh, sidewalks uh, this coming year. Also, uh, we're requesting $8,600 for uh, the purchase of large print books, and we're hoping to at least uh, <coughs> purchase up to 300 large print books. And then finally, we're asking for $2,500 uh, for Haven, and these funds are to, use, uh, are to be used for uh, domestic violence programs. 
These are the three uh, programs that we're recommending, Your Honor. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Any questions for the city manager? No questions other than to add <coughs> that um, the uh, importance of uh, sending money to Haven uh, can't be uh, understated. And uh, we appreciate the work they do for uh, bettered people across the county. And uh, we're delighted to be able to uh, include that tonight uh, in this motion. Ms. Prince, would you please call the roll on resolution <coughs> R4012? Steadman? Yes. Trubrick? Yes. Baker? Yes. Blanchard? Yes. Cadeckel? Yes. Clyde Onsen? Yes. O'Dwyer? Yes. <coughs> now, Ms. Prince, could you please read item number six on tonight's agenda? Resolution R4112, matter of approving a resolution of, this, of the City Council of the City of Berkeley, Michigan to approve a contractor agreement with Richard M. Eshman as Director of Public Safety Department for a period of 10 12 through 10 14 Is there a motion to approve R4112? Motion to motion. approve R4112. Motion to approve by Mayor Pro Tem Terbrack with support, support from Councilmember Blanchard. Mr. Sesson. You know, Council, I'm very, very privileged to present this this contract uh, before you this evening. It's it's rare that I'm given the opportunity to work with such an, an outstanding uh, director, <coughs> but because of requirements that uh, that are mandated by by state law for a public safety director, uh, he must retire at the age of 65. Uh, but I'd like to say that with regards to our director, he's a very young. <laughs> Uh, 65 and he has been doing an amazing amazing job for our city and because of that I'm recommending this contract to the to the City Council to consider uh, it is a it is a two-year contract and uh, it is uh, one in which uh, will save the city of Berkeley a significant amount of, of, of funds and of course based on the report that that's given to you by our public safety director it can be viewed in in several ways but uh, but again, I, I do think that uh, this is a good agreement, and I believe that our, our director will continue to provide uh, outstanding services for the city of Berkeley, and I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have, Your Honor. Are there any questions uh, for Mr. Sessom? Mayor Pro Tem Terbrack. I actually don't have a question. It's more of a comment. Uh, you mentioned the fact that this will save the city some <coughs> funds, um, and while that's nice during you know we're always certainly watching out for our dollars and cents right now um, it also allows us to keep somebody who's done an exemplary job a tremendous asset to the community a tremendous asset to all of our officers uh, somebody who has so much institutional wisdom that you can't just replicate things like that um, and I think that you know to me personally is, is more important than even cost savings when it comes to public safety uh, myself and I'm sure council members up here and the residents uh, are most concerned with what's best for the community what's going to keep everybody safe and if uh, you know sometimes it may cost us more it's worth it in that case now in this case we're kind of getting the best of both worlds saving us a little money also getting um, you know a, a top-notch director so uh, I wanted to make uh, that comment before we move along thank you council member Kadekel uh, I thank you mr. mayor I concur with mayor pro tem's comments but I just want to know how you hide your age so well. <laughs> <laughs> Any other? Uh, Councilmember Blanchard. Thank you, Mayor O'Dwyer. I'd like to say that I have worked with the chief since he's been in that position and find that he's done an outstanding job and have had a great time working with him. He gets things done over there, and uh, it's been a pleasure for the past 10 years to work with him. So thank you, Chief. Uh, Councilmember Platt Onsen. I think you drew a blank on my name there for a second. <laughs> <laughs> um, a, a couple of things, same uh, sort of going the route of comment here. Um, one is obviously we're able to keep an employee who's done a great job. Um, the other is actually on the flip side, having nothing to do with the person the contract is with and something that we need to think about moving forward, something that I've been thinking a lot since this has come up. Um, and that's the idea of uh, we've seen a lot of contracts come before us, especially in the world of public safety. And what does that mean in terms of, um, of our approach to staffing? I know we've done a lot of cost savings and uh, ba uh, budget balancing 
um, by going that route, but what does that mean for us um, long term, and what does that mean for our unions long term? Um, and right now we're looking at having two, our two top leadership positions as contract employees, which in the world of succession planning makes me, makes me a little nervous. You know, we could, we could lose these guys to, to retirement at any minute, and I definitely want us to be looking long term at, at, at what that means for, um, for the city as a whole, so that's something that you know, as we see, as we saw, you know, Bob North's contract come before us as, uh, as he retired and we kept him on, and now uh, with Chief Ashman, that's just something that I wanted to sort of bring to light as just a, a thought for us and moving forward with, with this. And, um, and just a, another, in terms of process and in terms of timing and, and how we've been looking at we had a sort of a very short time frame to be to be talking about this and looking at this as a whole. I'm guessing he was probably going to turn 65 around this time for a while. <laughs> so, um, what can we better do in the future to you know prepare these discussions and and um, have have time before he actually is is out of office for two weeks um, to have that sort of gap? Luckily, we had Bob to fill in. Which is fantastic, but you know what can we do to sort of fill those gaps a little better or avoid those gaps moving forward? So, just from a process standpoint, um, those are some things that sort of came to mind. Um, we're lucky in that we have the opportunity to 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 keep chief, and we just need to be really thoughtful moving forward about about how we continue to um, to staff, especially in the in the world of leadership and, and what kind of timing we have to, uh, to prepare for that and make sure that there's so, some strong succession planning for our uh, residents. And when you talk about we need to remain safe, public safety, this is hugely important. So that's something that looking long term, I would want to think about. That's all, Good. thanks. Thank you. Councilmember Baker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And uh, thank you as well for bringing this before us. Uh, uh, Chief and to, and to all of us, this, um, this is a great opportunity here. I do, um, I'm very pleased with the opportunity and I will be supporting this tonight to, uh, to retain such incredible talent. Uh, leadership uh, is unquestioned, his uh, expertise is, uh, is, is phenomenal and well um, respected throughout the city and the region. So I'm very pleased that we have the opportunity to continue this relationship uh, with, uh, with someone that's done so much for the community and for all of us for so many years. Uh, also, as a process uh, person, I do think this is a great opportunity to look to the future and to see how and in what ways we can um, um, address some of the, the systemic um, opportunities here with uh, sourcing and staffing the, uh, the organizations at the department head level. And uh, so I'm very thankful for the opportunity to do that in a, in a um, measured and deliberate uh, manner here. This is a, a two-year contract, which gives us um, a lot of opportunity to ensure the, the continuity of the organization is preserved. Uh, the institutional knowledge is uh, respected, and, um, we, and we can take those, um, those measured approaches to, uh, to do what's best for the city as well. So, so again, I'm very uh, supportive of this. I think this is a, is a great opportunity to, uh, to move forward. So, so thank you. Thank you. Any additional comments? Just, just to comment, Your Honor, I, to let the council know that, again, this is a, this is a very special situation or circumstance that, that we were and that we do have uh, these two types of individuals in order to assist us. Uh, and had, I, had we not had that type of, uh, of uh, leadership, I would have taken a different step towards, towards this process. Um, but, uh, but please know that I understand your concerns and, and I'm well aware and I, and I will work on them because two years can go by so quickly. So I, I, I do appreciate your comments and concerns. Uh, uh, anyways, uh, and just for the public viewing out there, I know that the uh, that the memorandum here that was prepared by our director of finance, uh, Mr. S David Sabuda, indicates that we're going to save about twenty-eight thousand seven hundred dollars, or twenty-two percent of the general fund expense. I know that there are other other items as well that are not included in, in this amount that could save us uh, a little more. Uh, but um, but it's not just about saving money. It is about hiring the right individual and uh, the person that provides the proper leadership for our department. And uh, this individual does a tremendous job for us. And for that reason, I am recommending the City Council consider this contract. Thank you. Uh, we can do both things, as it turns out. We can save 
quite an amount of money, <laughs> and we can retain an extraordinary leader. And so we're very fortunate and very blessed in this town to have uh, one of the finest uh, chiefs in the state of Michigan. And uh, I will be very happy to vote yes on this item. Ms. Prince, would you please call the roll on R4112? Turbrick? Yes. Baker? Yes. Blanchard? Yes. Cadeckle? Yes. Platt Onsen? Yes. Stedman? Yes. O'Dwyer? Yes. And now, Ms. Prince, would you please read item seven? Motion number M6512. Matter of authorizing the city manager to execute an agreement with up Right Fence Incorporated of Westland, Michigan for the construction, replace, construction replacement and installation of fencing and benches at Lansby Park not to exceed the amount of $32,360 in accordance with its sealed bid dated October 4, 2012. Is there a motion to approve M6512? Motion to approve M6512. Motion to approve by Mayor Pro Tem Terbrack. Support. Support by Council Member Cadeckel. Ms. DeSessa. Council, I know that this is an item that has been worked uh, very diligently by the Parks and Recreation Director, Mr. Tom Caldwell, and because of that, oh, we'll give it to Teresa. Okay. Then I, well, both Mr. Caldwell and uh, and the Parks Manager, uh, Teresa McCarlton, and for that, um, I've been uh, asked to uh, request that uh, Ms. McCarlton uh, please come forward and give us a brief summary of this item. Ms. McCarlton. Good evening, Mayor, Council, City Manager. Um, so basically you see before you some of the work that's going to be done at Lazenby Field. Um, the reason that we put in the contract not to exceed is because we're still sort of figuring out a little bit of how much fencing we can get, um, but the, the underlining project will be replacing a lot of the fencing on the sidelines, the dugouts will be replaced, the benches, and the backstop. And we really think this will be a huge improvement at the field. Um, it's needed, it's necessary, and this is a really good start to improving the field. In the coming years uh, with uh, Berkeley Dads Club, there may be some additional work done on the actual infield and in the dugouts. Um, but at this point, this is what we can um, get uh, in regards to the CDBJ funds that were approved. Question, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Tarbright. Uh It's actually just a comment mm -hmm. as well. Sorry to disappoint you, Ms. Carlton. Um, she, you mentioned uh, that we were going to be doing the fencing and the backstops, and, and one of the you know, very important things that this allows us to do, if any of you have been to Lazenby Field, they have very small dugouts, mm -hmm. and they are very difficult to fit a full baseball team in there with all the gear that kids have these days. Everybody's got their bat bags. Everybody's got you know spikes and things all over the place. Uh, so through this process, enlarging uh, the dugouts uh, will allow us to use this field, whereas in the past, you know, the Dad's Club hasn't been able to use Lazenby nearly as much as, as community field, certainly. Uh, so this gives us another option, and, you know, we all know what a great job the Dad's Club does, uh, and we'll get to the Dad's Club again uh, in the next item, but uh, th this will help out the city tremendously. Yep. Both the dugouts will be expanded. They'll be a little bit uh, different size just based on what the needs are, but they'll both be expanded, and there'll be room for storage uh, areas in both the dugouts. Thank you, Councilmember Baker. Yes, uh, thank you, Your Honor, and thank you for uh, coming out tonight for your presentation and for helping prepare this for us here. A question on timing and duration. So if we were to proceed with this uh, tonight, when might we imagine beginning and how long would it take? Uh, right now they're looking at their schedule, but they've told us it only takes from about start to finish about 10 days. 10 days. Um, they're looking to start within the next two weeks approximately. We'll have a more secure date in the next week going forward with them. Uh, the contract does state that they have to be done by December 14th, obviously given weather conditions, but again, it only takes 10 days. Um, so from now until December 14th, um, it will be completed. Great, thank you. And then we'd be able to coordinate with any uh, scheduled use of the facility in, in the meanwhile, so folks are aware of the timing and things like that. Absolutely, and most of our fall seasons are winding down, mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Council Member Blanchard. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, does that also include the uh, concrete work in the dugout? I noticed that was a separate, it was not addressed in this contract. It, it's exactly, they didn't end up bidding on the, con on the concrete work. Um, in the next motion, you'll see uh, that the concrete work is being done uh, based upon a gift from the Berkeley Dads Club. Um, that will also be completed um, 
they don't have to work in, in conjunction, the way that the concrete's laid down and then the way that the benches are cored basically into it. So um, they will finish, they said it would take them no more than you know two, three days to do the actual concrete work. So everything will be done in the same Everything will be done in the fall. Yeah, it'll be ready for the spring to go um, because there'd be no way given the frost laws and everything in the spring to be done. So everything will be done this fall and they'll be ready to be played on in the spring. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. Any additional discussion? Seeing none. Ms. Prince, would you please call the roll on M6512? Baker? Yes. Blanchard? Yes. Cadeckel? Yes. Clyde Onsen? Yes. Stedman? Yes. Turbrack? Yes. Odewear? Yes. Now, Ms. Prince, would you please read item number 7B? Motion number M6812, matter of accepting a gift from the Berkeley Dads Club for concrete work in the visitor and home dugouts of Lazenby Field for the amount not to exceed $6,000. Is there a motion to approve M6812? Motion, motion to approve 6812. <laughs> motion to approve by Mayor Pro Tem Terbrack with support by Councilmember Cadeckel. Mr. Sessa. Council, this is a formality. Obviously, we need to uh, express our appreciation to the Berkeley Dads Club for this gift. And as required by our, our city uh, charter, the city council needs to formally accept this gift. Uh, as uh, Ms. McCarlton expressed, uh, they will be doing the dugouts and they will be done in conjunction with the concrete work uh, that's already been done for the, si uh, the uh, fences and things of that nature. So we do expect to uh, complete this in the fall. Be happy to answer any questions, Your Honor, except just to make one more explanation. I'm, I'm sorry, there's some problem with my mic here. Uh, the reason we're doing this separately for, uh, for the individuals that are out there is because we're using CDBG funds. We don't wish to confuse uh, the two. And uh, we do have to present uh, uh, these, uh, these statements to, uh, to the CDBG uh, program as such, because these are different funds. We don't want any confusion with CDBG. And as such, we have to present them as separate items. So we thank you. And we thank do you. recommend this, Your Honor. Mayor Pro Tem Terbrack. Um, you know, Mr. Sessa just said we have to go through this as a, as a formality, but the $6,000 or amount not to exceed is certainly not a formality from the Dad's Club. Mm -hmm. You know, this was bid out uh, as a complete project, and, and based on, you know, what we got back uh, in the sealed bids, you know, the, the, this part was not bid into that bid that we were going to accept. So if the Dad's Club did not come forward with this, uh, with the money to do the concrete pad, it kind of would have been silly for us to do the project now and, and you know the timing would have been thrown off it would have taken much longer we would have been into next season and the fields would not have been usable again uh, so I am extremely grateful for the dad's club stepping up yet again as they've done so many times uh, in this community donating a significant amount of money to improve the fields um, and as uh, Ms. McCarlton mentioned a few minutes ago the dad's club is also planning on you know further down the road um, doing some work on the infield some regrading to further improve uh, Lazenby Field and, and make uh, that a field that's much more usable and accessible to our residents and to our team. So I just want to make sure that I, I certainly do thank the Dad's Club and you know we had that statement from Mike Dooley earlier. Notwithstanding that statement, <laughs> um, you know they, they've been around for a number of years. I had the opportunity to play for the Dad's Club when I was, you know, I'm still this big, but when I was a little bit smaller than I was um, and, and you know the organization seems to grow and expand every year in the scope of what they're able to do for the community. Uh, so I'm very thankful for all that they do. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? I think uh, Mayor Pro Tem Terbrack uh, expressed the sentiments of the council and the sentiment actually of the residents in terms of our gratitude to the Dad's Club for all they do and have done for this city. Uh, and so we're, we're, we're thankful to accept once again another 6,000 from them. Ms. Prince, would you please call the roll on M6812? Blanchard? Yes. Cadeckel? Yes. Clyde Onsen? Yes. Stedman? Yes. Turbrick? Yes. Baker? Yes. O'Dwyer? Yes. Now, Ms. Prince, would you please read item number eight? Motion number M6612, matter of approving the appointment of Rob Anesco to the DDA Board of Trustees as a Coolidge representative with a term expiring July 2014. Is there a motion to approve M6612? Motion to approve M6612. Motion to approve by Councilmember Baker. Support. Support by Councilmember Blanchard. Mr. Sessa. Council, I'm very pleased to recommend Mr. Onesco for your consideration. Just to give you a little bit of background <coughs> about, uh, about him, he has been a bran branch manager at Fifth Earth Bank for the past six years. Uh, and uh, now he has recently moved over to run the uh, Berkeley branch. 
in August of this year, and he's responsible for all the aspects of the branch, including community relations. He has um, been a resident of the city of Berkeley for two months, but uh, but actually he's uh, all, he has he's lived in Berkeley much longer than that. <laughs> he's a, a longtime resident and grew up in Berkeley actually and attended uh, Berkeley High School, and uh, he was very anxious to come back to the Berkeley branch. Uh, just because of his uh, his connection to the city of Berkeley. Uh, but he has been in the banking uh, business for more than 10 years. And as I mentioned earlier, he has uh, he grew up in Berkeley. Uh, both the um, chair, uh, Alan Simonian, and myself uh, met with him to conduct his interview, and uh, he, he did very well. <laughs> so anyways, with that, Your Honor and, and City Council, I'd be happy to answer any questions. We are rec I am recommending Mr. Onesco for your consideration. Any questions on uh, this nomination? Very good, then. Seeing none, Ms. Prince, will you please call the roll on M6612? Kadekel? Yes. Wyatt Onsen? Yes. Stedman? Yes. Turbrick? Yes. Baker? Yes. Blanchard? Yes. O'Dwyer? Yes. Ms. Prince, would you please read item number nine? Motion number M6712, matter of the appointment of Karen Brocklehurst and Shirley Hansen to the Historical Committee with terms expiring expiring July 2015. Is it a motion to approve M6712? Motion to approve M6712. Support. Motion approved by Councilmember Baker with support by Councilmember Blanchard. Mr. Sessa. You know, the Historical Committee is getting very, very popular. Indeed it is. And we're very pleased. Uh, Your Honor, if you don't mind, I'd just like to go over these two individuals' uh, background. Uh, Ms. Karen Brocklehurst, uh, she currently teaches legal writing, uh, research and analysis at Baker College. And uh, previous to that, uh, she worked at, at the Veterans uh, Law Clinic. And, um, and after that, she worked as an arena manager for uh, Qualix Inc. Uh, she has been a Berkeley resident for a little over four years, and uh, when when we asked her why we, what were her interests and qualifications for this appointment, she she stated that she's always been interested in history of Southeast uh, Michigan, and uh, she's always considered Berkeley as home. She's assisted creating the outreach program for the 75th birthday uh, of the uh, of the Detroit Zoo. And she uh, has an emphasis in research in her schooling and teaching. So with that, Your Honor, I do recommend uh, Ms. Karen Brocklewurst for, for your consideration. Next is someone that I know is no stranger to the city of Berkeley, and that's Ms. Shirley Hansen. Um, she, is, uh, she is a retired individual, um, but uh, she has been a Berkeley resident for more than 62 years. Uh, when, I, when we asked her about her interest and qualifications for this appointment, uh, she stated that the love of, of the city and desire to preserve its history. She believes that it's a very, uh, she's very good at detail and organization, and I can attest for that. <laughs> she's excellent. Uh, other than that, she says that she has been, she's lived here in Berkeley for 62 years, and she has personally witnessed and participated in our city's history. So I suppose that is an excellent qualification. And with that, Your Honor, I do recommend Ms. Hansen as well. And she is here with us this evening. Uh, if she'd like to make any comment or, or, <laughs> or also Ms. Uh, Ms. Brocklehurst. I have nothing. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> you feeling well? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, is there any additional discussion on these two uh, appointments? Councilmember Baker. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Just uh, more of a comment again to express my gratitude to the volunteers. Uh, the vice chair of the committee is here as well, Mr. Jeff Tong, and I appreciate uh, you coming out tonight and uh, for all that you do and for the committee does on behalf of uh, preserving and promoting the city's history and helping us uh, uh, to capture the here and now as well, because every day we make, uh, we make new history and it's great to be a part of it. So, so thank you all. Thank you for volunteering to help be a part of uh, the committee and, and uh, you know, the historical joke, here's to the future. So thanks. <laughs> Very good. Uh, Ms. Prince, would you please call the roll on M6712? Wyatt Onsen? Yes. Studman? Yes. Turbrack? Yes. Baker? Yes. Blanchard? Yes. Cadeco? Yes. O'Dwyer? Yes. Now, Ms. Prince, would you please read item number 10 on tonight's agenda? Resolution number R4212, matter of approving budget amendment for fiscal year 2012-13. Is it a motion to approve R4212? 
Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Councilmember Stedman. Support. Support by Councilmember Kadekel. Mr. Sessa. Council, as you know, our finance director is very adamant about making sure that our, our budget is in balance. And in order to do so, we do this in accordance with Public Act 2 of 1968 as amended. And with that, I'd like to ask our finance director to please go over the uh, budget adjustments we're recommending the City Council to consider this evening. Mr. Sabuda. Thank you, Mrs. DeSessa. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and Council Members. Tonight before you, you have three amendments. Um, we are talking about spending $29,000 new, new money, 29000 mm -hmm. and it's 100% at the Arena Fund. We had three emergency purchases totaling $29,000 there, and the Arena Fund did not have the dollars available, so what we're recommending is transferring money from the General Fund and the um, Recre Recreation Revolving Fund to the Arena Fund to pay these expenses in the amount of $29,000. There are two other uh, amendments on the uh, uh, before you this evening. Item B is with the Downtown Development Authority. Uh, initially, the DDA had $500 uh, appropriated for the holiday parade. Uh, they they want to increase that to $1,500, so we're going to increase the line item by $1,000. Uh, they're going to take it from a different line item, uh, the banner line item uh, that they have appropriated. So they're going to reduce one line item and increase another. And then the final item is um, part-time salaries in the clerk's department. Uh, with the uh, presidential election, is a rather large election. And what we're doing here is we're keeping a part-timer uh, on hand in the afternoon. Normally, uh, that position uh, ends at, at noon, 1230. Uh, we're keeping that position until 5 o'clock through the election season so that we can properly uh, process and handle the counter <coughs> work uh, during this election season. Uh, again, uh, we're taking from one line item within the clerk's department, uh, which is which is contractual services. We don't think we're going to be spending that, and we're going to be moving that into uh, part-time salaries to cover uh, the young lad's um, um, increase in appropriation. And with that, Mr. Mayor, I'd be happy to entertain any questions that the council may have. Any questions for our finance director? Mm -hmm. It all seems uh, very clear and necessary. Um, Ms. Prince, would you please call the roll on R4212? Stedman? Yes. Turbrick? Yes. Baker? Yes. Blanchard? Yes. Kadeckel? Yes. Platt Onsen? Yes. O'Dwyer? Yes. Uh, now we come to the communications section uh, of tonight's meeting because of the change in the lineup. And I believe the Mayor Pro Tem is first up. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just a few quick things this evening. Uh, first off, this weekend on Saturday, October 20th, we have the Berkeley Craft Show. Uh, that's from 9 to 4 at the Community Center. Uh, please make sure you stop by. There's a number of booths and crafts, jewelry, all, all kinds of good things, uh, seasonal things to get ready as we move into the holiday season as well. So please uh, make sure that you stop by there. Also, uh, Parks and Rec related, there is some work being done at the Tot Lot. If those of you are not around that area, don't see that. Uh, the tot lot um, had some drainage issues and uh, some other facelift issues, I guess, that needed to be taken care of. So they are uh, taking care of that right now, and we hope to have a nice uh, unveiling next spring of, of the reworked tot lot that we're all looking forward to. Um, other than that, uh, just simply go Tigers and go Blue. Thank you. You <laughs> 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 Very good. <laughs> Council Member Pat Onsen. Oh, I, I would like to follow that also with a go blue as a, as a Wolverine. I'll be, I'll be enjoying the game, so everybody keep their fingers crossed for no rain on Saturday. Um, two quick things today. Uh, one is that we're wrapping up the fall tree planting program, so um, we'll start to see the new trees planted shortly, thanks to the tree board and the uh, DPW for their work on that. Um, and then the second is that the Environmental Advisory Committee um, still has applications out available to any resident, and uh, I think they um, also do some work with businesses for the Recycler of the Year program. Um, those are available <coughs> at, on the website at City Hall at the library, and I think that might be it. Mm -hmm. um, you have two more weeks, so through the end of October, to nominate yourself or someone else to be uh, Recycler of the Year. So um, hopefully we can get some good applications in for that. And that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Kadekel. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have a few things today. 
Um, also on October 20th, uh, the Berkeley Huntington Woods Youth Assistance will be having a Moms to Moms sale from 9 to 1 at the Berkeley High School East Gym. Uh, tables are still available if you'd like to have a table there. The number is 248-837-8102 uh, for those of you that would like to participate can call. Uh, over the last few weeks I've had the pleasure of attending a few different conferences and meetings and uh, I was fortunate enough to go to the Michigan Municipal League conference and I can't say enough how educational and how rewarding it is to be amongst almost 500 uh, people that are council people, city managers, administrators, meeting all kinds of people and really getting educated on how to better serve our city. And I really want to say how much I enjoyed that. Also last Wednesday, I attended the Woodward 5 sustainability uh, meeting. It was awesome. It was in Pleasant Ridge. It involved the five cities along Woodward. Uh, and we met to how to talk about how to better the relationships amongst the cities and working together um, as one throughout the Woodward 5 corridor. Uh, I'd like to send um, get well wishes to the assistant varsity basketball coach at Berkeley High, uh, Mr. Mike Sermo, uh, is recovering comfortably after some surgery. Also on November 3rd, Many of you recall uh, Staff Sergeant Matthew Leach. Uh, he was Grand Marshal in our Cruise Fest Parade in 2011. Uh, he passed away recently. And to honor the memory of Staff Sergeant Leach, the uh, Berkeley American Legion is building a monument, a very unique monument in his memory. And to help <clears throat> With the funds of this, they're having a pub crawl on November 3rd from 6 p.m. to 12 a.m. And it's going to start at the Berkeley American Legion, and then it's going to go to Bagger Dave's, Mr. J. John <coughs> Grill, Berkeley <coughs> VFW, and then the final crawl, literally, will be back to the American Legion. And the cost is $20, and it's a great, great cause. Uh, I want to wish everyone a happy, happy Halloween since we're not going to have another meeting before that. And remember to vote. And while I'm reminding people November 6th is voting, I want to wish <coughs> our city clerk, Cheryl Prince, and all the volunteers and her staff a lot of work. And uh, it's great because I don't think the Tigers are going back to New York and <coughs> go Tigers. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Baker. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, a few quick things. Uh, following up on um, the historical committee, we had some appointees to the committee earlier this evening, and I want to thank them again uh, for their work with that. Uh, we will be um, closing the museum on Sunday for some remodeling. So some of the things we do every so often is to try to freshen up the place, move a few things around, uh, bring some different exhibits uh, uh, to be more prominent, uh, prominent and um, easy to see. So, um, so thanks to the committee for all their excellent work in, in making that happen. And uh, we invite you all to come back uh, in subsequent Sundays to check it out uh, as we uh, uh, continue to move forward with that. Uh, also, thanks again for all the folks that have provided uh, historical photos of the, their neighborhoods, of their families, of the city, of the downtown uh, area. The, the, the treasures have been um, tremendous. Uh, the stories have been uh, very moving, and we're uh, very appreciative for, uh, for the continued support um, to help, again, preserve and promote uh, the city's history. So thank you for that. Uh, speaking of um, um, moving things, so um, the transportation secretary, the, f uh, the national um, transportation secretary, Mr. Ray LaHood, was in town uh, today, uh, and he had a press conference with the, uh, the governor and the mayor of Detroit. And one of the things that they, they focused on was uh, legislation that's working its way through the state, uh, through the House and Senate, having to do with the Regional Transit Authority, or RTA. And I just wanted to, again, uh, raise uh, awareness of that um, and its implications for us uh, here in the city. So as a matter of fact, um, tomorrow um, we will be uh, having our monthly session to talk about uh, the Woodward uh, Corridor, the Woodward Avenue is doing an alternatives analysis study to see what, what ways uh, mass transit would be appropriate for our region. And it's uh, dependent uh, in, in large part on volunteers from across uh, all of the communities on the Woodward Corridor to understand uh, the opportunities and, 
and then at the same time having support at the state level and the federal level to actually do something once we have the results of the study. So it certainly uh, will be continuing this process to identify how and in what ways transit would, uh, would make <coughs> sense for our region. And it's uh, and thanks to the support at the federal and at the <coughs> state level uh, that we're, we're seeking to have this legislation in the first place so that we can uh, actually move forward with something. So I say this in a, in a positive tone, but we actually don't have the RTA legislation in place yet. Uh, and there's certainly some continued discussions to move that forward. The, um, the Transportation Secretary's presence here in Detroit um, helped <coughs> emphasize that. He reminded us all that there are uh, millions of dollars available um, to help us move forward with this. We just need to have the, um, the uh, desire to do so. So um, as your opportunity presents itself, please reach out to your elected officials uh, to help us encourage uh, the passage of this um, legislation. Um, as was mentioned uh, also by my, uh, my colleague, uh, Mr. Kadekel, uh, I, I had the great pleasure of, of joining him and uh, Council Member Blanchard at the Michigan Municipal League uh, MML conference uh, last week. And it was indeed a great uh, um, pleasure to, to interact with, like we said, um, 500 passionate folks from across the state uh, to talk about best practices and sharing ideas and problem solving and panel discussions on, on a wide variety of topics. Uh, and uh, one of the things that uh, continued to be a part of that was the notion of making sense of place, place making. And uh, we have a lot of that here in the city of Berkeley. We are tremendously walkable. Our downtown continues to develop and grow. Uh, we had an appointment to our DDA board uh, again tonight as well. And so the notion of place uh, resonates with us uh, quite well here. And one of the themes that, uh, that came up um, led me to thinking of a quote uh, from um, Mr. Alan Alda. So Alan Alda, the famous actor. Uh, was quoted as saying, your assumptions are the windows of the world. Scrub them off every once in a while, or else the light won't come in. So your assumptions are the windows of the world. Scrub them off every once in a while, or the light won't come in. And so I, uh, that reminded me of, the, of this when I learned some, um, some facts having to do with some of the assumptions we make around transit and around um, um, patterns of um, how we move around. One of the things that we're doing here in the city at the moment is a traffic study on Coolidge, because uh, what we want to do is go from stories and ideas to actually get to some facts to see how and in what ways, if any, uh, could we do some, um, some work on Coolidge Highway to, uh, to uh, maintain or improve its safety, uh, maintain or improve the visibility of the businesses, the ability to, to get from point A to point B, embrace our complete streets policy, those kinds of things. And one of the studies that was discussed uh, had to do with the notion of vehicle miles traveled, and that's a key kind of instrument that we look at in terms of usage on a road like Coolidge. And uh, so some folks did some studies on traffic uh, from 1970 to 2012. So that's a pretty wide um, range there, 1970 to 2012. And every year since 2004, it has declined uh, by 6% uh, on average in terms of vehicle miles, so driving. That doesn't mean people are going fewer places. It just means that they get there by other means, um, public transit or bicycle or walking, things like that, not driving so much. And a uh, particular interest that, uh, that uh, kind of surprised me, for they break that down by age groups, demographics. And from 16 to 34-year-olds, uh, that's declined by 23% since 2001. Uh, and again, folks are still going places, it's just not necessarily by motor vehicle. So, so I really was encouraged by that, again, to find information and facts. So as we do our study and as, as communities around us, I continue to emphasize that sense of place, that sense of belonging, that sense of wanting to be somewhere. That's really what sense of place is all about. It's like, I really want to be there. Uh, this, uh, the notion of transit and the notion of, of safe passage um, across a um, significant part of our downtown that is Coolidge. Uh, came to mind. So I'm hoping we can, um, we can look at our assumptions uh, as we uh, think about the Coolidge that we have today and uh, challenge those assumptions in, in, from a fact-based measures uh, to see what could we have the Coolidge of tomorrow be for us. Uh, so with that, thank you uh, and I appreciate the time. Thank you. Council <coughs> Member Stedman. Okay, first of all, um, the library. Uh, several volunteers from the Friends of the Library spent uh, uh, Saturday recently replanting flower beds on either side of the library's main entrance. They took out uh, poor soil and planted several varieties of hostas, coral bells, columbines, and low light plants that were donated by the members. Um, also, uh, they're having a book sale this weekend, 19th, 20th, and 21st, so, and it's at the library. So um, you might want to stop by there and pick up a book. They may still be accepting donations if you have some at home. Um, the other thing is, uh, and I received my letter in the mail today, 
uh, from the city of Berkeley uh, regarding the uh, sewer line contract that residents can purchase. So watch for yours from the city of Berkeley. It's $6 a month. It covers $4,000 uh, for your sewer line from the house to the street. And it covers an additional $4,000 if, if your cement has to be dug up in the road. Um, so just look out for it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Blanchard. Thank you. <clears throat> I, do, I also attended the MML conference and found it very enlightening. I learned quite a bit. Uh, I think my colleagues have pretty much covered, uh, covered it already, but it was, it was a great conference and a great learning event. So I'm glad I was able to go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Sessa. Mr. Mayor, I hope I, I'm not going to steal your thunder here a little bit, but you know, talking about the MML uh, conference, I, I know you're going to perhaps mention that a little, but I, uh, if I may do so, uh, say so, I, I would like to personally congratulate uh, Councilman Baker. He has been appointed to the board for the Michigan Municipal League, and it's quite an honor. So thank you, sir. Congratulations. Uh, I know I've been here for 10 years in Berkeley, a little bit over, more than that, and to my knowledge, you are the first. Uh, to be appointed to this to this great board, so congratulations. I know you'll do a great job for us. And if there's anything I can do to assist, you know, please let me know. Uh, you know, I know the council has mentioned um, various <coughs> boards and, and commissions. I again ask everyone to please uh, join. Uh, I know that the beautification committee is going to start up all over again, and you'll be hearing from them shortly. Uh, but if anyone's interested, please go to our website at www.berkeleymich.org. You can get a copy of, uh, of an application uh, of boards that you may be interested in. Just fill it out, send it to us via email or mail, or just come by my office and drop it off. So I encourage everybody uh, to please do that. And that is all, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Sabuda. Mr. Mayor, thank you very much. Um, absolutely, go green this, this, this weekend. Go <laughs> green. Thank you. Thank you. Go green. Mr. Schneider. <laughs> yes, you do. I would uh, also agree with Mr. Sabuda about saying go green. Hey, uh, hey. There are some Spartans around go here. Go green. Um, go green. <laughs> and I would like to congratulate Chief Eshman. I'm glad you're back. Thank you. That was it. Thank you. Ms. Prince, do you have any comments on uh, the election coming up? Thank you, Your Honor. Yes, I have several. <laughs> I thought you would. Okay, um, Tuesday, November 6th, in case you haven't <coughs> noticed, is a presidential election. If you are qualified, I please, I encourage you to request an absentee ballot from the clerk's office. The qualifications include being over the age of 60, you may be out of the community on election day, you might be working in a precinct, you're unable to vote without assistance, you're unable to attend for re religious reasons, or you may be awaiting uh, arraignment or trial and in jail. The lines are going to be long. <laughs> So again, if you are qualified, please request an absentee bailout from the clerk's office. Our office will be open additional hours on the Saturday before the election, November 3rd, from 9 to 2. It's the last day that you can request an absentee bailout to be mailed to you. There are six proposals on the ballot this year, and we have sample ballots on the, the website under the clerk's office elections page. You can get to that page by visiting www.berkeleymich.org. Um, we have sample ballots for all the precincts, well, the, all the pre ballots are the same for all the precincts except for Precinct 7, excuse me, yeah, Precinct 7, which has an additional ballot proposal for the Royal Oak School District, and there is a Royal Oak um, School District School Board seat also on that ballot. You um, can see those again on the website. In order to vote in person, you pl please have your photo ID, you must have that to vote. That this would include a driver's license, a Michigan ID card, a school ID card, a military ID, or a tribal ID. And if you are not sure where your voting precinct is, you can call the clerk's office or you can visit our website. There is a link um, on the elections page for find your voting precinct. And then finally, I just want to say thank you to our election workers who are giving their time. It's a very long day. It's very little pay. They do this because they care about the community. And I just ask you to be patient because the lines will be long. And they'll be working a long day. And uh, they're doing their best to serve you. So make sure that, to make sure that your election goes smoothly. Thank you. Thank you. I have just a couple of comments. Uh, I would like to um, echo the comments of the city manager. Uh, in expressing the sentiment of all of us 
in the appointment of uh, Council Member Baker to uh, the Michigan Municipal League. Uh, it is um, a position of great responsibility and you know as councils across the state we rely on a lot of direction, a lot of guidance uh, from MML and so uh, it is a great honor for Berkeley that a member of our city council is in a uh, position of directing that important organization in the state. Uh, on Friday of this week, uh, the State of the City presentation will be sponsored by the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, it occurs at Farina's at 11 o'clock. And finally, on this color question of blue or green. Green. <laughs> Go green. <laughs> all, all I know is that my team uh, beat both of them. Oh. <laughs> uh, but we wish that both of them have a wonderful day. And uh, my sentiments will lean oh. a little to the green side. <laughs> so thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Prince, would you please read <laughs> item number 11? Closed session, matter of adjourning to closed session to discuss the city attorney's evaluation. Is there a motion to adjourn to closed session? Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn to closed session by Council Member Stedman with support by Council Member Blanchard. Ms. Prince, please call the roll. Ba oh, I'm sorry, Turbrick? Yes. Baker? Yes. Blanchard? Yes. Cadeckel? Yes. Platt Onsen? Yes. Stedman? Yes. O'Dwyer? <coughs> Thank you.